Hey, this is another great video by Ricky Kennerly Cichlids. In this video, we're looking at something that the viewers wanted me to do. I kind of, you know, put it off for quite a while because a lot of water king videos are very boring to me. You know, you see the water get taken out of the aquarium, you see it get put back in. I've seen it, you know, a hundred times and it's not really exciting. So I wanted to, before I did a water king video, is to come up with something a little bit more different and exciting. And this is actually exciting. See, I have a room here that is down from the bathroom, okay? Uh, when I say that, uh, I use a python in my other rooms to do water changes. But in this case, it's going uphill, uh, you know, and you can get a siphon going for some of the aquariums with turn the faucet on but you're using a wasting a lot of water to get the, the siphon to work that way it takes a lot longer so uh, I've come up with a different method to how to get the water out uh, and uh, I'm going to show you that in this video what basically what it is let me change the camera over just a little bit you see I have the python here coming into the aquarium and here I have a power head. I have a power head connected to it. And it's going to take, put, it's only four steps up to the bathroom. It's not like a flight of steps. But you might not be able to do this in a flight of steps. Okay, but only, it's only going up a uh, height of about four steps. Uh, and so the pump is going to pump the water out. And I have it to about where I want it to level in this aquarium. And I'm going to be having it pump out the water. Now, if you see here, there's a little bit, of, it's stirred up a little bit, I've been messing with it a little bit, but uh, when I do water changes, I scrape the algae off the front of the glass, uh, and also I stir up the substrate. You're going to see me do that. I don't have, I don't know how to do the uh, fast-paced uh, method of a video showing you all this, so it's going to be a little bit slower uh, in the video, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to show you some things and show you how this works as well. Now when you do this with the uh, power head, it's not something that you basically set up and then you walk away from. Well, the, one of the things that could happen is the hose could pop off the power head. So if you're not watching it, I would not do this type of water change without watching it. Uh, if you're going to not watch it, then you want to have the hose clamp on that because this could, the hose could come off that and it can actually blow water out of your aquarium so you have to be careful with that also the hose is connected to the sink and you don't have to have it, you could have it go into your bathtub or some other place but I have it connected to the sink because the hose is st it's sturdy and stays in one spot because when water is going through it it can move or someone could trip over the hose and move it so it is going to the normal spot in the sink I just have it set up to, to do a water change but I'm not going to have any water running through the sink. So let me uh, take some time to uh, stir up the substrate here. I'm not going to actually show you that. I'll show you after I do it and I'll be doing some scraping as well. So stay tuned for this kind of unusual video. Okay I've done my scraping. Uh, now some people just go for the spots where there's algae. Uh, what I like to do is scrape as much as the glass as I can. Sometimes I look from the side to see if there's any uh, film or anything on the glass, which is a lot of the film is good, but it also could be the starting of the uh, algae growth. So when I scrape, I just don't uh, get the spots that you see. I also get most of the glass. Uh, you know, so that way you have less algae growth in the future. So that's another tip I have for you. So just don't get the little spots, and you know, there may be some algae right here, and then skip this right here. You want to go all the way across, and you have less algae the next time, and you want to scrape as often. So now I'm going to take time to stir up the aquarium and uh, get the waste flowing around. All right, I've got the water all stirred up. I don't know, you can see the debris. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. Look at that. Look at that back there in the aquarium. Really a lot of debris. Also, I take time to... Uh, a lot of your cichlids or other fish will move the substrate around, so I move it back in the front. I move it towards the back when I do the, you know, stir up the substrate. 
uh, get that check, uh, taken care of and and also if you want to move around some of the ornaments and so forth that would be the time to do it so uh, I'm going to take time to uh, turn on the uh, pump now I do have a cord that uh, you can plug into and just turn the switch on it's a extension cord just a few feet long I gotta, I gotta find that but you can use that now I'm gonna basically for right now just plug it up get the uh, pump going and the water tank will start again so you'll see that I'm gonna give you a little bit better look at the uh, power head right now there's the power head let me go up a little bit so you can see the water go down slowly so I'm gonna plug it up and get it going now in the past video, which was a very popular video, uh, there it goes. Going great. Now, there's one thing you should, you know, in case you have a very powerful pump, you might want to check your sink and see how much water is going into the sink. Where uh, I don't really think anybody's going to have enough power. Uh, more powerful power head that will actually fill up your sink and keep it from draining but you know, make sure that the drains open and so forth uh, let me get in the get in front of the camera a little bit here so basically in the past I had a video let me move this back a little bit in the past I had a video it said uh, why not to use a, a python or similar to fill? Now I'm using it to empty. Now in the future, I actually will be using it to fill, but I'm not going to be coming. Water is not going to be coming from the sink. Too many times there's problems with the temperature. Uh, you can get distracted and not get the chlorine out in the right the right amount. Uh, I don't like the fact you're putting chlorine water in and you, you already have the, the the chlorinator in the water. Uh, in the aquarium, I guess I would rather have the chlorine out of the water before it's put into the aquarium. That's my opinion. A lot of people are, are totally against that. That's my opinion. Uh, my experience with my fish uh, over 30 years uh, is to not do that method. So, in the future, I will be having a trash can, which I did at work at a fish factory, uh, rubber made trash can very sturdy not all trash cans will work so make sure you remember that not all trash cans will work for this and I'll have it filled I'll place it where I need it in this like this room or in my other fish rooms I'll fill it up with water I know exactly how much chlorine out to put in there I can have it circulated I can even put a heater in there and a bubbler to get to the right temperature that's what I'm going to be doing in the future and that will be the second part of this water change video so that's how I'm doing I am taking it out with a python. It's not exactly how they, you know, envisioned to use it, but the hose works good for this particular uh, power head. If you look here, let me zoom in on it. Uh, let me focus a little bit. The power head here has a screen over the uh, intake and that way you're not sucking up any fish now these are, this is all front hoses here so it's really not much of an issue uh, but if you have smaller fish you want to have some type of uh, intake strain to keep it from sucking up fish now if you're just doing mild debris that's good if you're if you got uh, an aquarium full of sand when you stir up your substrate, you want to give it just a little bit of time for the actual sand particles to go back down. Because this will suck up waste and be no problem. And it won't hurt the pump. You might want to clean it out after you do a few water changes. But you don't want sand to get in there. So if when you stir up your substrate, you'll instantly turn on your pump. And give it a little bit of time for the sand to go back down. And you see here, there's already the water has gone down quite a bit pretty fast. This is a big aquarium. This is a... I think it's a 135, it may be a 125, I haven't really measured it uh, to check it out, but it's a big aquarium, and so uh, you want to have your strainer on the power head, uh, don't walk away from your water change when you do this method, okay, don't walk away from it, uh, if you do, uh, make sure you have a hose clamp right here, check your sink, make sure it's 
drain good. Uh, unless you have like a 1500 gallon per hour power head, I don't think it's going to be an issue. But this is saving water. This is, in, this is water con conservation. You're not turning water on the spigot with your python to get the flow going. And the reason I'm using it this way also is because it's going up four steps. So it's water conservation and it's also going uphill, which is a problem when you're using your python. Uh, also, it's actually causing a current to pull that substrate, the waste particles into the pump, which is really good. Uh, you could move your, you know, move this around in the aquarium, but I'm not going to. I'll let it do what it needs to do. With uh, there's a little bit of circulation. I, I haven't turned off my, uh, of course, my sponge filtration because they don't have to be turned off. But you do want to unplug your heater. Uh, a lot of times, uh, you want to do a double check. When, after your water change is complete, make sure your heater is plugged in. It's very important, especially in the cooler months. Uh, a lot of your, even if you're just not the cooler month, your house is usually a little bit cooler than some of your tropical fish that you have. Uh, so you want to make sure you unplug it and then plug it back in. Some of the heaters. Uh, will get damaged or break and could cause your fish to die if you don't do this method. Um, many times I forget, but I do like a, like I say, a double check and see that I haven't plugged in my heater, and uh, that way I'm safe for my fish. Now I can sit down, read a book, or watch TV while this is being sucked out. And once I get my big Rubbermaid trash can, and the Rubbermaid trash can I'm talking about, there may be other brands but it's the kind that uh, you see in a lot of uh, workplaces that are used for uh, cleaning of the stores or uh, facilities uh, they'll hold they're really sturdy they hold a lot of water uh, you can actually get if you have a, a non carpeted floor you can get a set of wheels for them so you can roll them around in my case I'm, I'm not going to get that unless it comes with it I don't think it does uh, I'm just going to carry it around and then I'm going to probably put it outside for storage but you'll have to make sure that there's no bugs or anything in it when I bring it back in. Now the reason I'm doing this method and, and, and not having it going out the door, well there's a lot of ants, there's a lot of bugs, I live around a wooded area. Uh, I don't want all that stuff coming in the house. There's also your wasps and so forth that would, could come in. Uh, so I don't have it going out the door. Uh, plus the, the heat from the outside is going to heat up your house. This is why I like this method and I just really actually started it today. I thought about it uh, and now I've worked it out so I can use it. Um, I was never against the python, uh, just the methods that some people use. They, didn't, they thought I was downplaying the importance of a python. I was telling people how important it is to uh, not fill using a python in my opinion uh, the way that most people do i'm going to be using a bucket not a bucket but a, a trash can to take the water out of the trash can you're still using a python because it's hose that's what i need i need hose and i'm going to be using this power head and it's going to be putting the water back in after the water condition the dechlorinator has been put in uh, also, if the temperature is a little bit off, I can put a heater in there and get it up to temperature. Things will be looking good. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it's something different. You may have already been doing this yourself. Some of you may have already used this. It's not something that's, uh, you know, just, just a stupendous idea, but it's something that people have not thought of. Uh, like I say, it's going uphill. That's why I'm using a pump. Uh, it is connected to the faucet, so it would not. If the hose gets moved, the water's not going somewhere else, it's going into the sink. Uh, and then also if you walk away, you want to make sure you have a hose clamp because it could actually make a geyser like they do at, uh, you know, Geyser National Park or whatever that, Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone National Park, uh, and so it could go onto your floor if you walk away. So uh, make sure this is on good. If you're going to walk away, make sure you have a hose clamp. Well, thanks for watching. This is pretty cool video and I'll have a second part video about filling up the aquarium once I get my trash can uh, they're actually kind of expensive but maybe you can get a second hand one or whatever but make sure you, the ones that you use
can hold that much water because you don't want 40, 50 gallons spilling on your on your floor. That's that's crazy. So thanks for watching and thanks for all the good ideas and comments you've been giving me. They give me great ideas for videos and allow to give information out to others that don't know about it. So your comments and questions have been really important to me. So thank you and give me a thumbs up. Remember, it's not the I was never blaming the product. I was blaming how it was used. So use your products right.